when we've been looking at the concept of profits, you'll see very clearly that even such a small and subtle thing as I'm going to point out tonight, and it's very short, it's not a long teaching, it's very short, has two great emphasis on it to show you even before the coming of Christ, before the, at the time of Christ's birth, we have a clear clarion idea of what even the prophet then looked like. Luke's Gospel in the second chapter. Now, after Simeon blesses the child and speaks a word to Mary, it says there was one Anna, in verse 36, a prophetess, a daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, which is the tribe of Asher. She was great age, lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. She was 84 years old, a widow, 84 years old, departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. And this is what I, I really highlighted because these are the things people read right by. And spake of him to all them that looked for redemption should be in Israel. Now, there's two things I'd like to tell you about here. It's another confirmation she didn't make some declarations and some independent uh, conjectures about what will happen next week. She was speaking about the Lord, the Deliverer. Remember what Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, the Spirit of Truth, He will speak of me. Now, let Scripture confirm itself. For those people who are still not sure of what the role is and how this should work, if you're not sure, you've got to go back to the source, and the source is right out of Jesus' mouth. She, not speaking of him, he, and she spake of him to all them. She didn't speak, by the way, this is my sidebar, to you out there who are judgmental, critical of my ministry, ignorant because you can't fathom that this is even in God's Word. She spoke to all of them. And the them, by the way, is men and women who were in the temple. She spoke to them. That's just my little sidebar, by the way, for the people that get irritated. You know, women shouldn't speak. Here's a woman who is labeled a prophetess, and she spoke of him to all them that looked for redemption in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Israel. I delight because this accomplishes twofold. I was really reflecting on this. I'm going to take a sidebar for a minute, and I'll come back to the prophet in just one minute. I was reflecting on this because I've told you that every few months some new nutcase comes out of the woodwork and starts to be critical of me and says, well, you know, what, you know what the scripture says about women. And then it really dawned on me. God gave me such clarity about something I'd never even considered before. What did Jesus Christ come to do? It's given to us to understand right there in Genesis 3.15. Now, if he came, as Romans 5 declares, by one man's disobedience, Adam, plunging the whole world into sin and death thereafter. And by one man's obedience, speaking of Christ, reconciling and redeeming the world to himself. And Galatians speaks of the law and the curse of the law, that it fell on him, and that we were able to walk away and walk out from under that curse because he bore it then there's something wrong with people's understanding about what Christ effectively came to do to redeem fallen mankind, including the curse put upon first mother and father. In other words, it doesn't change the fact that we're still flesh, that women still will have children and have pain in childbirth, or that men must still go out and work. But does that make you less saved by a redeemer? Or does that simply 
Do you understand the logic in all this? In other words, if you're going to go down the path of arguing something that maybe even possibly might have been misunderstood or misconstrued by people in the early church, then you've got to re-examine the whole reason of why Christ came in the first place. If it's not to undo the damage that was done in the garden. That doesn't mean that we'll live in another container while we're here. We live in the flesh. But the flesh is not to be redeemed. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus with the deposit of, of His nature within us already living in us. That means the curse from the law and the curse of Adam, which is the curse of death and dying and being cut off from God, has been reconciled by Christ's work, which means the enmity is gone. And the idea somehow, I'm sorry, I still believe in exactly what it says that uh, Paul writes in Ephesians. The pattern that God intended of man and woman and man and woman's relationship in a marriage and in relationship to the church. But don't use that as a club because through the Bible, God even reveals his own way that when there was a failure within the human realm of mankind, of men, God did condescend to use women at any given time. And I believe there's no exception to that rule, including this time, because the men that were here in this ministry, who all had the opportunity to step up to the plate and be the men that God intended them to be, all flaked out. So don't look at me and blame me, because I didn't ask for the job, but I'm certainly glad that God has straightened my mind out on the situation because I'm reading here about a woman who was a widow of 84 years old which departed not from the temple, served God with fasting and prayers night and day. She came to give thanks unto the Lord and she spake of him to all them that looked for redemption. She didn't speak to the ladies group. She didn't speak to the cooking uh, crew or to the bake cake uh, ladies with buns. She spoke to all of them that looked for redemption in Israel. So two things I emphasize to you tonight. The fact that she's a prophetess, she spoke of him, not some independent thing. And she spoke to them, just to clarify, the them, by the way, is all those men and women who looked for redemption in Israel. It's pretty straightforward.